ready for 125 pounds. Ethan Lezak, last year's national runner-up, and he got here by a medical forfeit or default by Soriano, the top seed in the semifinals. You see that, and uh, a win over Rivera from uh, Northwestern. Tomasello, big win, revenge over Lee from Iowa to get into the finals. They did get a chance to watch that match. Be Tomasello basically did not take the bottom position the second period. Did it all on his feet, got a takedown in the latter minute. Was able to go ahead and ride out Lee for probably the most, one of the most exciting matches of the tournament. Last time these two met was in the dual meet. Tomasello winning 18 to three. Got it rolling and it never stopped. So, he's talking about adjustments that Lezak's gonna have to make. And Lezak's done that. I mean, he's, he's been able to go ahead and, and had a strong finish to his uh, season last year, making it all the way to the NCAA Finals at 25. Where he beat, got beat by Cruz of Lehigh. You want to put it back? You know, I think Coach Ryan said at best, he, they, the last, first time that they met, okay. it was uh, Lezak maybe had a little bit tougher time making the weight. Big long rangey 125 pounder. And, and of course, Tomasello dropping down from 133 pounds where he was at last year. Nathan Tomasello, the redshirt senior out of Parma, Ohio, Cuyahoga Valley Christian Academy, a three time. Big Ten champion in on their high cross, cuts across, trying to score the first two points of the match. And Lezak is locked up there above the knee. And he's pretty solid in this position. He's Now he's got a position where it's going to make it difficult for Tomasello to cut across. And here's where he's able to go ahead and improve. And I think that uh, just a little couple hours of, of a weigh-in here late in the season, you're going to see a little bit different Lezak, and that was a good positive sign for him to stay in the match, fighting off that high cross shot of Tomasello's. Lee's out, out of Schnecksville, Pennsylvania, Parkland High School. So you got a PA and Ohio prep, two tremendous prep programs as far as uh, the high school wrestling. Look for Tomasello to stalk and stalk and stalk, and he'll, he likes a little swing single there, but that lead leg of, of uh, Lezak, the one that has the Minnesota, the M on the singlet there, that is where Tomasello likes to live. And if he can get to that here, he just put straight on with a great double leg here. Good work. You know, that was such a super adjustment there by the champion, Tomasello, because he, he, he uh, even though it was his favorite leg was led right there, such a deep, staggered stance. So he just decided to go after both of them. First two points on the board by the three-time big champion, well, let's get a Big start, Ten champion. Sure. There's Jay Jaggers, a two-time national champion, Ohio State assistant coach. Optional start there for Tomasello. Again, it's, it seems like Tomasello has made the determination. He says, I'm going to win a national championship this year. I'm going to try to do it on my feet. You know, made that determination. Now, Lezak in on the shot below the knee. He's pretty effective here. He is very good right here. Yep. He Scoop the bottom leg. Go ahead and score. Tomasello, pretty good scrambler. Able to go ahead and get two point takedown there. So, a great answer by Lezak. He already, that's a huge confidence builder for him in this match. To be in the top position early. You know, we saw last year where he was able to put up a string of back points on world team member Thomas Gilman. You know, if this match wasn't going his way, he, he was likely going to choose the top position anyway. Now he gets it on his own with a good takedown. Tomasello, a national champion as a freshman, third as a sophomore. And at both at 125, went up to 133, got third last year, back at 125. Good there work by, and you know, thing about Thomas Sully, does a pretty good job of staying in the ball, right? Good work there, he was able to collect the two back points right there, quick two back points. No argument from the Ohio State coaching staff there. Now he's got that left leg in there again, and if Thomas Sully doesn't block this, technique, he's going to be in a little bit of trouble in this match. He's coming up high, high with the uh, stand-up. Again, we're at short time here with four seconds left. Take a look at the keys to winning a championship here. 
you know, play to your strengths, and that's exactly what uh, is happening here with Lezak, getting in the top position. Increase your pace if it's not going your way. Tune into your corner and trust your instincts. There's just too much thinking that can go on sometimes. You've got to be instinctual out there to try to win a championship. And today's Keys to the Meet are brought to you by Nebraska Wrestling Camps, the best team camps in the country. Nice job. Tomasello. Again, he's, he's shorter and compact anyway. That's what uh, Lezak, you see the height difference between the two athletes, almost close to four or five inches there between the two 25-pounders. Look for a nice job of going ahead and, and, and balling up here, keeping the knees up close to the chest. He's able to go ahead and catch it, that leg right there, but Lezak grabs his own ankle, right? Basically sets the stirrup for himself right there when he goes ahead and, and uh, cinches it right there against his ankle. Now he works off into a spiral ride. What Lezak, yeah, Lezak will try to go ahead and get him into a crab ride, stretch him out. When that chest comes away from those thighs, it's trouble for Tomasello. As Lezak builds up the riding time, you see the drop down below Lezak's name. And wow. It's five to two. Lezak trying to put more points on the board. At least he had a one count right there. Referee Jason Wedgeberry. I think it was a good call. No call there on the second count. Good work. Now you've given the official the impression that you're, you have to look for that. Yeah, nice work there by Lee Zach in the top position. Totally a different wrestler than he is in the beginning of the year. As we said, he's coming off a loss to Tomasello in their duel mate, 18 to three, a tech fall. Lezak in his element, getting on top early and scoring. Well, he's doing the th first thing we talked about in the match there, he's wrestling to his strengths. Being in the top position, this is an opportunity for Tomasello to get in it, right? Again, he's already been warned for stalling the top position and he just goes ahead and gives up the escape. Tomasello, Five to three, just to take down will tie this up. A good riding time advantage there for Lezak. A short time right now. Lezak has to present himself in the middle of the map. You don't want to give up a stall warning. And you all already know that Tomasello is capable of, short, of scoring when it's tight. There's huge a spin opportunity for Tomasello. Short time, 20 seconds left. It would be huge if Tomasello scored and rode out, and it looks like that's what he's gonna be able to do, big, big points. You know, when you get warned for stalling, you gotta make sure it doesn't take you out of what you like to do, right? And that's a classic example, got warned from the top position, gave up the escape, and put the match back in Tomasello's strengths. Wow, 5-5, five, five. Tomasello out, or, or tied up here. Lezak has the riding time, Tomasello's gonna choose neutral, here we go. Third period, all tied up. And right now, if you're if you're Lezak, you, you know that you've been in this match at this point. You know which direction Tomasello is going to attack you, and you've got to just go out there and try to manufacture some points of your own. You've got some confidence. You're able to get a takedown yourself. But Tomasello can afford to be patient. Just like that, a bad shot and an easy go behind. Tomasello used a late takedown in the third period against Lee from Iowa to come to the finals. Intentional release there by Tomasello, wise. Now effectively it's a tie score with Lezak's riding time. So Tomasello gave the escape, the one point to Lezak. He's out front, but as Jim said, he's got riding time stalling on Lezak. So that should be one point. Tomasello out front now, 8-6. And the three-timer is starting to smell four times. And it's been done very seldom in this tournament. Yeah, Lezak has an opportunity to score. He's got to create a scramble. Guy who has his head up is going to win the scramble. Good job of uh, Lezak by getting out of the danger position. You heard the one and two count. That was the stress that he was at 90 degrees. Goes for three seconds. He will award the points, but likely going to end up in a stalemate. And that's what's been impressive about Tomasello, particularly in the semifinals with Lee, was his defense. He won that match with a lot of good defense when Lee had some good shots on him. Less than a minute left. Nathan Tomasello, three-time All-American, three-time Big Ten champion, trying to become only the 15th ever in the history of the tournament four-timer. 
This is a point in the match where you've got to trust your corner. You know, they're telling you to continue to march forward here, get the points, or whether they just want to basically to hold position to win a championship match. You can see that uh, Tomasello working a little bit high. He's holding position. Rizak really has a lot of trouble here. Tries a shot. But the shot has basically got to try to set something else up. There's another stalling going off. It can be one of three ways. Yeah, Push out, back a, off, or, or in play. And uh, Jason Wedgeberry, the official, calls the fact that Lezak was backing out and stalling, and that would be another point. Yeah, if you take a look at what was happening there, it, it, Tomasello did push, but you have to answer that by circling at least slightly. No question that if you get a chance to take a look at the replay here of that last push out. And the indicator for me, well, does Tomasello extend his arms to push him out? And I think the answer is yes. Right? It's kind of like, you know, if you're wrestling, you're not really extending your arms out like that. A push out is actually, when you're at the full extension on your bench press right there, that's, that's what that's Brandon real, Megan has a, a, a problem with. Yeah, that's a really good call, uh, Jim. Uh, good observation there. Brandon Eggum is asking the official to look at that and make a technical call there. Yeah, and it's it's uh, so much installing is, is not, 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 not technical, technical, right? It's what you see, but you know, in that situation, down by one point, are you really tr trying to stall? I mean, you're the one that's down. You, you got pushed out. Ohio State trying to add on to their lead, nailed down their second straight team championship at the Big Tens. What a program that Tom Ryan has built. The flywheel is starting to roll, and it's year in and year out now, Jim. Well, this, you take a look at the going into the finals here where there was an 11 and a half point spread, right? Jason Nolf wrestled yeah. in this tournament, okay? And he went out there and wrestled a couple of matches and then he forfeited, uh, did a medical forfeit. He wins one more match, that's seven and a half points, right? Tightens this thing up quite a bit. Ohio State has seven in the finals, Penn State five. So, we'll see what the call is gonna be here. I think we're going to get a reversal, and I think it's a good one. We'll yes. know by the uh, score. Yep. Eight to six, they take the point away. And Jim, your point uh, as far as the way that... Um, I'm just looking for extension. extension. Yeah. yeah, extension of his elbows right there. And that's really... You don't do that unless you're really trying to push him off. Go behind there for Tomasello. And that'll be the icing on the cake right there for the four-time Big Ten champion. What an accomplishment. Ohio State's second, Logan Stieber. Their first and most recent of the 14. Well, there's a 15th. And his name is Nathan Tomasello from Parma, Ohio. The Ohio State Buckeyes get their second ever four-time Big Ten champion. Your winner, 125 pounds, Nathan Tomasello. Just a winner. Everything about that young man is preparation, discipline, big hug for Zach Sanders, a guy that he trains with for the international style, so just a great sportsman. Knows how to come back down to the last year's national runner-up comes back to win his fourth. And Nathan Tomasello, the champion, is with Shane Sparks. All right, Nathan, once again, it's a battle, but you make history today. How rewarding, personally, to win four conference titles in this great, great, tradition-rich Big Ten. Uh, I've lost the words. I'm very grateful, thankful for so many people, my coaches, my teammates, my friends, my family. I just love them all. I've always really appreciated watching your body language when you prepare for battle. What's most important for you to prepare mentally before these matches? Just relaxing, calming down your nerves, knowing it's a big moment, but just going out, giving my best, and knowing that God is, God is always going to be glorified through my wrestling. Great representative of the Big Ten. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. TJ? Your Big Ten champion at 125. 
Nathan Tomasello, the 15th ever four-time Big Ten champion. No matter the sport, Michigan, Ohio State, it's always a rivalry. Stefan Micic, the number one ranked wrestler here, seated wrestler at the Big Ten, had a pretty easy time of it. Tech fall, but Fletcher, the number two seed, won by sudden victory over McKee, pick it to the final. Well, also in the first match there, Fletcher had a nice match with uh, Pepple from Indiana here. And he ended up getting a one point win right there, which is, was a technical violation in the last 20 or 30 seconds here. So two different paths between these two guys, but they, they made their seeds and this will be fun to watch. I, I really enjoy both guys, as far as the, the development that uh, Pletcher has had down at this 133-pound weight class, he was at 41 last year. But this Stefan Micic is just like amazing technically. You know, talking to the Joe McFarland and Silver Fox, and what's so fun about watching Micic is bringing that long body style into the sport where he can go ahead and score. If you're a little bit long for your weight class, this is the guy that you want to watch. Well, what he did just there, Jim, is what he needed to do. He got low and got to the legs first. Yeah, and that's what he was able to do the last time that these two got together. And not everybody, they, once they get to Pletcher's legs, I mean, look at the size of those legs. I mean, he is a brute. Had a, had a look at the two assistant coaches at Michigan, Sean Bormet, and then with the beard there, Kellen Russell, one of the four-time Big Ten champions. Out of the 14, now 15, including Nathan, there are eight in the building. Michi's going in with the leg ride. There, it's a nice job attacking, going inside out. They're attacking that far elbow, and he's also got a hold of that right ankle. You know, and that, it, it, it all the while, just going ahead and spreading Pletcher out a little bit further. Nice job by Pletcher getting to his feet. And these are uh, our committed rides on, on Michi's part. He does not want to let uh, a Pletcher go. But every time he's able to get a takedown and add 30, 40 seconds worth of riding time, it all is cumulative. Well, I'll tell you something about Pletcher is that he's impressed me because he just wins, baby. I mean, yeah. and it's not pretty usually, but he uh, it's always a one-point match or so, but he usually wins. And last night, he was behind 3-0, came all the way back in the third period to win in sudden victory against McKee from Minnesota. Yeah, that's, you know, been the case as far as his... Career's going close matches. He's not going to count on him for a lot of bonus points, but he does move up the bracket. Luke Pletcher, a sophomore out of Latrobe, Pennsylvania, Greater Latrobe High School. Had a lot of offers coming out of high school early, but Ohio State wasn't one of them, and he held out. He said to his mom and dad, I want to go there. I think they're going to give it to me. And later in the process, they did. So he's where he wants to be in the Buckeye uniform. Uh, big staggered stance there by Pletcher. He doesn't give you many windows to be able to attack, but you know what? Michich works hard with that two-on-one. Notice how he's going ahead and push that wrist in towards the body of Pletcher. That puts a, a little bit of torque on the right arm. Now Pletcher, they're going to go ahead and call a stalemate. Angel Rivera on the call there as the official. Michich. A redshirt sophomore out of Cedar Lake, Indiana, Hanover Central High School. Started at Northwestern, took a redshirt year, then an Center. Olympic redshirt year. Center. And last year, as a freshman, he was actually in his third year of college wrestling. Well, what do you have to do to, to, to turn the tide in this match? I mean, Michic was dominant in the first match. We saw where Lezak in the last match was able to tighten up a match that was a technical fall last time around. These championship matches are just a little bit different, and there's another low shot there, be able to scoop the bottom leg. He can push that left thigh away here, cover, uncover his head, he's able to do it and collect the points. And short time, less wow. than 15 seconds left. A ride out here, take down and ride out would be huge for Micic. Yeah, you see that he's dropping down on the leg, not, not give up the count, but that's okay because he's not gonna give up the stall warning and run out of time. Right. So, two takedowns in the first period for Stefan Micic from Michigan, the number one seed over the number two seed, Pletcher. And here's where he's improved the most. You know, taller guys, you know, usually have a little bit more difficult time getting out from underneath. You know, it's, it's you got a lot to kind of keep compact there in length, and, and Micic does it as well as anybody. This is the rubber match this year. This is the third time they've wrestled. They've split. Pletcher winning the first time, seven to five. And then in the duel a couple of weeks ago, it was Michich getting revenge, 11 to five. Yeah. 
just putting up a lot of points, and that's what he's able to do. Now, straight on shot by Pletcher, very difficult to spin around. So if you're nice duck out to that side. And one thing that, that Pletcher understands about his style, he's not gonna move too much out of that uh, square to, to staggered right lead leg. And so you've gotta take him down, either beat his lead leg, because it's almost impossible to get to that back leg. With those elbow controls that uh, Nietzsche's working on, likes to work off that two on one. Nice snap. See, this is the, the time in the match here where the pace isn't going your way if you're Pletcher. And so what are you going to do to change it? Can you increase it? Can you make your, your opponent work a little bit more physically? Nietzsche right into the two-on-one. So every time you lay your hands on him, he's got an answer. From both sides. Yep. He's got a nice little drag to that back leg. Gets to the leg, spin around situation, good whip, over. 30 seconds, nice spin around opportunity, but good strength there. You know, if you're gonna wrestle in college, you gotta win that go behind situation. 20 seconds left in the second period. Micic has extended his lead five to one. Two early takedowns in the first period, an escape in the second period. Five one, the number one seed, trying to win his first championship. Short time. Two seconds left, but that's exactly what Pletcher needed to do. So he's working the head a little bit more, changing the pace of the match. Down by four going into the third period. Last night, he was down Pletcher. Mohio State was down to Minnesota's McKee. 3-0, came back, tied it up, went to overtime and won. There was Kellen Russell, the four-timer for Michigan. Coming up into a deep squat, tripod stand up there, trying to peel arms. Let's see how committed Michich is to this. I think he, he probably will be committed to riding in the top position. He moves up. And the reason why, he doesn't want to get his head pounded on in that uh, in that neutral position. Michich continues to work up here, and he's going to get the call, and it's going to be a stall. Stayed below the hips for five counts. Angel Rivera, the head official, Gives the count and the stall warning against Michic now. The next one will be one if he's called for stalling again. Right, and that's kind of a trade-off there because he was able to collect the riding time, uh, at least a short amount of riding time above the minute, 13 seconds. But I think, you know, this is an example of, you know, you don't want to get the official to knock you out of your style. If you want to stay in the top position, by all means do it. Don't let a stall warning keep you from being where you want to be. And Michi just committed to that top position right here. Last year's fourth place finisher in the NCAAs as a freshman at 133. Pletcher down from 141. Tomasello went from 133 Action, down to 125. Pletcher had a good weight for him. And this looks right. really good at this weight class, but now he gets spread out a little right bit there. more. He's going to call. Top. We're stalling. Fred. Again, and that's a good call. He's not moving up off the ankle. Well, he's, he's, Angel Rivera is going to test his resolve to stay in the top position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a minute 10 left. There's uh, enough time to uh, have a lot of things happen, including more stall calls. Coming up into that squatting position right there. Comes up. And working hard in that spiral. Cast across. Is able to collect and the reversal. reversal. Yep. Cuts him loose, so the reversal. Two points for Pletcher. One point cut loose. It's six to four, and riding time in favor of Michic. So Michic needs, or actually Pletcher needs two takedowns. Or a stall call and a yep. takedown. Michic in on the shot. Notice how the pace is picked up here for Pletcher. Michic's holding on to that two on one. He can't let that arm go. Probably likely going to get a stalemate out of here. Pletcher can't move it. Yep. 22 seconds left. Six to four, the lead. Stefan Michic from Michigan over Ohio State's Pletcher. Riding time in favor of Michic. A takedown alone won't be enough. But if he's hit for stalling and he gets a takedown, we would go to sudden victory. Right to that shin whizzer off that uh, 
single leg there. He's able to come back up. This is a situation where Michi knows that one takedown won't hurt him. And he does not get the takedown. A flurry, but one point. Fleeing the mat. For fleeing the mat there, but he'll give up that. No, one point for the uh, riding time. Riding riding time. time. Yep. Seven for a three-point victory for Stefan, your Big Ten champion at 133 pounds for the Michigan Wolverines, the first of four finalists. And Stefan Micic walking with our third broadcast partner, Sean Shane Sparks. Shane, you got him? Yeah. All right, Stefan, talk with your head coach, Joe McFarlane, yesterday said Stefan's a mat rat, he studies the sport. Who do you emulate your style after? Uh, I take a lot from different people, like a lot of the best world and Olympic champions. I'm more of a freestyle guy, but I to love for folk style. So, you know, I, I just say I take bits and pieces and I have my own style. It's very unique and I think that's why, you know, it's all coming together, so. What are the biggest differences between you now and that of a year ago that you feel has in position to win a national title in two weeks? Um, I would probably say conditioning is really good. Um, my mat wrestling is coming along. I just got to figure out how to, this match I felt a little sluggish the second day weigh in and everything, but you know, I'm happy to have this as like a test run and go into the nationals, but you know, my mat wrestling is a big, big improvement for that. Um, so. Nice job, congratulations, Stefan. TJ. I think Nick Soriano has finished sixth there. He falled down to a medical forfeit. So let's move on to 141. Number one seed, Joey McKenna going up against upstart. Number three seed, freshman Mike Carr from Illinois. Both of these young men having good tournaments. They really are. I've been really impressed with uh, Carr's effort here when he was able to go ahead and beat, beat Nick Lee. Not only the win was important, but the score, the way he did it, stay on the offense. And McKenna has just been cruising here. You take a look at it. He hasn't given up any points in the tournament so far. Number one ranked wrestler, All-American from a couple of years ago, finishing third in the country. So we're ready to go at 141 pounds. Joy McKenna, the transfer from Stanford. Started a couple of years at Stanford, was an All-American. Came into the Ohio State program this year. Tom Ryan calls him the, the hardest worker in the room. And obviously with the loss of three seniors on their team next year, uh, an, an obvious uh, a leader on this team into next season. The junior, Joy McKenna, going up against the red shirt freshman, Mike Carr from South Fayette, Pennsylvania, South Fayette High School. Joy McKenna, the junior out of Tawaka, New Jersey, Blair Academy. This Michael Carr is intriguing to me because he's just been tough in his matches and he's found a way to score against guys that do a great job of holding position. And just stuff like this, he goes immediately to a shin wizard, but if he gets in the top position, he knows how to improve keep guys down, he's got a championship style. Really important for both wrestlers to get in on the legs early, but uh, McKenna in there, Carr looking to get a uh, stalemate, but McKenna working to try to get the takedown on the edge. Trying to lip his right arm out there, but you see how he's got that arm, right arm straight up, McKenna. Stop. Stalemate. stalemate position. Talk about two student athletes. McKenna, th a perfect 36 on his ACT. Carr, 4.0 in pre-med chemistry. Both coaches call them crazy hard workers. I had a 36, but it took me two times to well, get Well, there it. you go, and I added it up, right? <laughs> so straight on double there by McKenna. Nice job of adjusting and getting to the single leg. He does a little run the pipe action there at the edge of the mat. No control. The control there with the no wizard control. again, showing flexibility. These guys at this level in this tournament, the, the, not only the strength that they have, the conditioning, but the overall flexibility that they show to get out of some of these deep single leg shots, just amazing to me. Mikey Cars from a wrestling family. His brother Nick was a Division Three national champion. Both sets of parents so supportive. I've talked to him. Wow, McKenna's, nice. Whoa, nice really work there. And a big Kelly Fireman's to the back, and McKenna has Carr right where he wants him. Right, just cruising right now. He has that arm tight to the body right there. Carr doing everything he can with that high bridge and somehow gets I'm off of his back. I'm holding four. That was well done. Great four. reaction. I'm holding four. I'm holding four. Here, uh, 
referee Nick Grosso basically talking about he's holding four. You can see that Joey McKenna, that's great officiating right there. Until he gave up that uh, cross wrist ride there, he wasn't going to award the points. It's well done. Hope we see more of that. Minute left in the first period. Joey McKenna out in front 6-0. I was talking to his dad, Jimmy. He was saying that he has really matured. You won't be surprised by this. Coming under the tutelage and the mentoring of Kyle Snyder. That's yeah, amazing. Well, hey, we, we saw it ourselves. That Nate Tomasello wins his fourth title. The first guy there out of the corner that, 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 to greet him was Kyle Snyder. Keep that legal. Keep that legal. Kyle Snyder, two-time world, an Olympic champion. Improve we'll here. see Improve. Snyder and Kuhn on the rematch at heavyweight. Coming up later today, Joy McKenna out in front for Ohio, strike, uh, Ohio State get, trying to get in their second champion of the tournament. The score. Let's work the score. Keep wrestling. He's got that wrist tied up there. He's going to go ahead and take him straight back. He's One. carrying his weight over the top. He's got two, three, four. You see three count. Now four. Wow, two four-point near falls out in front, 10-0, a big hole for Mikey Carr after the first period. Joey McKenna, the transfer from Stanford, two-time Pac-12 champion. Now in the Big Ten, an All-American 2016, he was third place, did not place last year. takes neutral. Already took out second ranked Kevin Jack in the regular season finale at North Carolina State to earned both the Big Ten and the NCAA Wrestler of the Week. And right now, he's got a 10-0 lead in the finals of the Big Ten Championships. You know, this is so critical. You take a look at, you know, everybody's got their eyes cast on what's going to happen in basically two weeks from, from yesterday, the NCAA Championships. And you see this battle that's going to go on between Penn State and Ohio State. And, you know, Penn State has been a bonus point machine. But you get guys like McKenna going out there and throwing up 10 points in a match. And, Getting bonus points in championship matches like this, I mean, it's just a, it's a huge boost. Mike Carr, the first freshman finalist since uh, Isaiah Martinez, freshman year for the Illini. So action, action. The kind of basically holding position, and you could just sense that Carr does, does, do I lay hands on him or do I just shoot? And he just. Took straight on shot right there with Work McKenna holding that. position in, in the, Wrestle out of that. the middle. Wrestle out we saw of that. the first time he did that with that straight on shot. McKenna answered with that barrel roll situation near arm far leg as a counter shot. You know, you, know, you see guys kind of countering with a uh, with a low shot, but that was a counter with the near arm far leg and took him right to his back. Well done. Joy McKenna, a big first period takedown, two face. four point Stay near falls out in front, 10-0. 30 some seconds left here in the second period. We're at 141 pounds. Ohio State's already won a championship, and it was Nathan Tomasello's fourth Big Ten championship. Michigan followed with Stefan Micic as a winner at 133. Top of the head. Look how tight these circles are that McKenna's putting in right there. He's just he's holding position in the middle of the mat. He holds leads pretty well. You can't really ever accuse him of backing out. You know, and, and really frustrating with his stance and, and motion. Tight circles, holding position in the middle of the mat. Brad, your choice. Brad, where are we going? He's, where are we going? Mike's looking at the corner, Brad thrusting his corner, and they're gonna, they're gonna go neutral. Here we go. Yeah, you, you, you down 10-0, there's, there's no easy choices here. You go back down where you've given up eight points and back points, or do you go ahead and... and uh, Stay out of the face. Stay on the on the feet, and I think you got to go back. I think it's a good call to go neutral in this position here because maybe these guys meet in the finals. Maybe that. one little lesson that Work you learn that. in this next two chin. minutes of wrestling might be Stay enough to the take the, the match the other direction. That's that. exactly right. And Work out of that. But the one thing about Joey McKenna that he's proven over the last couple of years is very hard to score on, period. Yeah, when he gets a lead, as he's seen it, he doesn't relinquish anything and he's tough in the top position and you saw his path to victory here has been opponents not scoring and once again opponent has a goose egg right nice oh nice shot right there that was a dart in by mckenna in on the leg trying to finish airtight on his finish look how he's elbow deep on that leg there with the right arm i would be surprised if he tries to 
He's going to circle him back. He's going to do a little crackdown right there. It goes right into that near arm far leg position. All right. Now he's going to go elbow deep on that knee, and it almost works like a Turk. He's able to turn the hips, belt buckle to the sky, gets the points. That's two. Everything going Joy McKenna's way here at 141 pounds. The junior transfer really making Ohio State. I mean, talk about Ohio State coming back. Everybody knew they were going to be really tough with what they returned. But to add a Joy McKenna and what he's doing now at this time of the year, Ohio State's wrestling their best right now. No question, Tim. We've seen that all weekend, last two days. They've, uh, but you know, we've talked about that with their program too. It seems like March comes around, the days get a little longer, and this program, guys, just turn the light on. But you know, I'm not counting how they're hitting the lines in any way, shape, or form. In the national tournament. This is going to be a really a fun environment, and what's happened in this tournament. You're going to get a Jason North wrestling a whole tournament. It's going to be interesting to watch. Well, I think if you asked uh, Coach Tom Ryan, he would tell you that when he talks about putting a nail in the coffin, have to have to nail it down. He's not just talking about this weekend. He's talking about the whole deal. Yeah. Scramble there by Carr. Head hunting. Not much he could do. A perfect performance almost there by. But the challenge brick here from the green corner that the Ohio State coaching staff looking for a team point, half a team okay, point, coach. looking for those two counts. Looking to see if there was a two count. Joy McKenna is the Big Ten champion. That's for sure at 141 pounds. The challenge is whether or not there were two more points and it would be a tech fall and a Another half point. Here, take a look at see. And what they're looking for here is that, you know, this is not necessarily, uh, probably not going to no. get that. But it's sending a message that we're going to battle for every point in this tournament going forward. All right? And that's a great message to send. Good call. And uh, good effort by Joy McKenna, your 141 pound champion it's just a matter of whether it's by major decision or tech fall either way he's thrown a shutout here at 141 pounds and made a statement going into the NCAAs at Cleveland you know, talk about the guys that come out of this tournament they're going to have Take a look one more time at this roll through situation. I think it might be called. Okay, maybe you get a point right there. You see the hand swipe, but I don't think he, I think it's well called. And I think it's, uh, you know, coaching staff battling for every half team point, right? <laughs> Jay Jaggers looking up at the stands, wanting his Ohio State fans to be calling two here. Not likely to get it. So the score 13 and nothing with the riding time. Joy McKenna is your champion as Joy McKenna moves to be with our third broadcast partner, Shane Sparks. Jim, I'm just thinking what happens today is a story that's to be continued in Cleveland in two weeks. That's always the case, isn't it, here at the Big Ten Championships? No question. you got to go ahead and battle for every team point. you got to battle in every match, and that's just the, you know, the finality of wrestling in March. It's really important. Let's go to Shane. All right, Joey, adding a Big Ten championship to your already very impressive resume. What made this title so special for you? Um, I think just the implications on the team. I mean, every day in the room we strive to better ourselves, which inherently will better the team. So really just doing as much as I can out there, you know, being a finisher like Coach Tom preaches. And really just, you know, the next step to the NCAA title. So really just going out there trying to feel good for myself and my team, um, yeah. 141 pounds in Cleveland is gonna be crazy. What are you most looking forward to gunning for a national title at 141? It is loaded, as you well know. Um, I mean, really just another chance to get on the mat and compete. I don't know say, try not to think too much about the results, really just how I'm gonna get better each day. Um, and, you know, I think you just try to build on each performance, and that's what I'm gonna try and do in a few weeks. I mean. 
a little bit of the underdog this year, but hey, I mean, it's cool. To try not to worry about that stuff, you know, worry about controlling the controllables, and that's all I can really say. Congratulations, Joey. Can I say one, show one thing? Let's fight, baby. A good for him, Jared Pop. Thanks a lot. Thank you. TJ? And your Hodge Trophy winner, two-time NCAA champion Zane Rutherford, going for his third Big Ten championship up against three-time All-American Brandon Sorensen. This will be their sixth time meeting. The record, Rutherford five, Sorensen zero. Rutherford, easy time getting to the finals. Sorensen, not as easy, but he got a big revenge, or a big win over Deacon, who took him into overtime in the semis. In, uh, he took him into overtime in the dual meet. He got a convincing win, 7-2 in the semis. Rutherford and Sorensen. Well, I don't think there's a harder working guy in any program than Brandon Sorensen, all right? You know, and he, he really works himself to a level where he can begin to compete here. But St. Rutherford has been the gold standard, okay? And it's just amazing to watch his, you know, if you want to be physical, he's going to be physical. If you want to be technical, he's going to be able to go. He just has such an array. And he has really been the... Uh, I think for this Denny Lion program that, that you know the stir that's been stirring the drink here for him for a while right, here. He's been a line. motivator. Shake hands. Immediately competitive. Set. Right from the beginning of his career. Fifth place finisher his freshman year, and then he's just been all solid wrestler. They had one really Watch close match in, in the duel last year in Iowa City. It was nine to eight. And the battle was just amazing between these two athletes. Not in the face. But don't be surprised if this is a rematch of the NCAA or rematch in a couple weeks ends up being the NCAA Finals. Like we said, it's just a continuing story yet to be told from the Big Ten Championships to the NCAAs this year held in Cleveland in 10 days. Brandon Sorensen out of Cedar Falls, Iowa, wrestled for Denver High School. He was a four-time state champion. He's been fourth, second, and third, a three-time All-American, as you said, Zane Rutherford, fifth as a freshman and first and first as sophomore and junior. And as hard of a conditioned athlete feet, that, he, that Sorensen is, it just seems like every time he wrestles Rutherford, face, Rutherford off. just works so hard out there, makes his opponents work so hard that he just, expo you just can't be in good enough shape to wrestle Zane Rutherford. I'd have you ever the seen anybody way. keep his feet moving like uh, Rutherford all the way through? I mean, it's just, well, you're, you're right. I mean, it's just pound, pound, stutter, stutter. Let's go. Well, it, 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 his, his style, even though it's a little bit different, is, it reminds you a lot of Dan Gable when he would grab people that all of a sudden they would be tugged on. And, you know, as a kid, I got an opportunity to watch Coach Gable. But as an athlete, he would tug, tug, tug on people. And it's just, it was just so real. And by three minutes into the match, you were just amazed at how tired the other guy was. And, that's the type of pressure that Zane Rutherford puts on the gold standard as far as tiring people out. I mean, he's in, in Coach Gable. 25-0 and 0 and only one match all year has been less than a major decision. Guess who it was against? Brandon Sorensen. They met in the dual meet 6-2. Rutherford beat Sorensen in the dual meet a couple of weeks ago. Otherwise, it's all been major decisions, tech falls or falls for the Hodge Trophy winner from 2017. Get the hands out of the face. This has been a good two minutes so far here for Sorensen to keep in good position. He's been able to fight, a good job of hand fighting. Well, his shot isn't really there, but he looks like he's you know, presenting himself. Notice how he's dropping, he's trying to post and, and uh, with his thumb to the inside, fingers up. Trying to post up, trying to catch uh, Sorensen reaching. The wrestler of the championships last year in the Big Ten, Zane Rutherford, not only won the Big Ten championships, but he was voted the wrestler of the championships. Another shot straight on by so, excuse me, Rutherford. Good period for Sorensen. Go your feet, you know. gentlemen. You, you mentioned it, Jim. He's the gold standard. He sets the example. He's hungry, hung, uh, humble, and smart. Break easy. Yeah. Green, top bottom standing defer. Green defers. Back to you, Red. There's the top two Red's right down. now. 
19, 18 and a half point lead for Ohio State. Penn State's got, got five left. He's Every win is at least four points. Down that green. does not count Center bonus line. points. Don't you can him. see that Ohio State has not yet clinched this. Going to be a second but, set. Uh, they are getting closer. Yes, Penn sir. State, not only the opportunity to it's be a pause. win Step all bottom. five, not that they're Down favorites green. in all five, but they could win all five, they're but they can score bonus points like Jim has mentioned earlier, but Ohio State keeping the pace up, winning two of their first three, and they've got four more themselves. You know, this match, Tim, is looking a lot more like, in a lot of ways, that the match that they had, that overtime match that they had in the center. a year ago in the, in, in the duel, all right? Zero Set, down no easy. points in the first down period. Top. But watch how hard Sorensen is going to work here in the bottom position to get out. Notice how he's keeping that, those elbows in, keep the pockets closed down here, gets to his rear end, and, and Sorensen uh, gets broken down there a little bit. He's trying to keep the legs out. I mean, this is a real huge battle right now going on. People don't appreciate how hard Sorensen is working down here to keep that leg out of, of, of uh, Rutherford's. Wow. Constant battle, using his head. All right, and look at Mr. Brotherford just kind of pry him out right there, chops him down, look for that left leg to come in, pocket opens up. Both wrestlers working extremely hard here. Rutherford trying to get his signature leg in and work that. See, he's working with that right knee there now, spreading that, giving himself enough room to put the leg in. See the right knee coming out there, spreading Sorensen out a little bit, keeping a lot of weight on the hands, no weight on his own knees. This is like a no hitter gentlemen. being thrown. This is like a no hitter being thrown in, in yeah. baseball. And, and, and you got to appreciate the, the level of excellence here. We're talking about a yeah. world team member in Rutherford, one of the best in the world. Nice work here by Sorensen. Of course, the riding time is adding up here, but he's not. He's keeping that leg out in a real fierce way. He's trying to be as mentally tough as he can. Rutherford keeping the weight on the hands, not putting the leg in, not taking the bait right now. He's not forcing that in there, forcing a leg in there that doesn't belong. He doesn't want to give up a reversal at this point. The two-time NCAA champion, Zane Rutherford out of Benton, Pennsylvania, Benton High School, has ridden out Sorensen in the second period. They'll go to the third period. Back to you, Green. And Green's Rutherford down. will choose down. Yeah, of course, you've got to go down right there. You just rid off your third period, like gentlemen. For Set bottom. Down easy. Two top. minutes. You get out, get an escape, you get it under one minute. It's effectively well, back a off, back off. Two no zero lead. Back off. Get set. Relax. Set. Now. Set. One one thousand. Good work there by, by Sorensen, not trying to keep Rutherford on his hands. Sucks him back on the edge of the mat. We'll get a new start. Looking to try to ride for at least a minute before he gets out and have a chance to yeah, erase the riding center, time. Gentlemen. Yep, exactly. And bottom, plus you want to make easy. Rutherford work as hard as, as you had to work in that bottom position. Flex the ankle first, pinches the knees. Coming hard with the spiral. Notice that Rutherford a little bit better at getting to his rear end and cutting the corner right there and being able to get to his feet. Well done. Wow. Rutherford gets out for the one, has riding time. So right now the score 1-0 on the board. All the pressure is on Sorensen now. What are you going to do? What's your go-to shot? What You've been thinking about this guy in your sleep for years now. What, what, what are you going to see out there that's going to give you your best opportunity to shoot? Six time in there career they, they've wrestled. Never has Sorensen cracked the code and beaten the two-time national champion Rutherford. Right now it's 1-0. A little more than a minute left in the third period. And this is where Rutherford is also very skilled. If you take a half shot around you, he'll stuff the head and has a nice drag. He scores a lot of points. When drags around to the uh, he actually can go either side with that drag. But notice how he's holding position. He senses that. He drops into a shot of his own. Can he finish it? And for Sorensen, this isn't a bad position to be in because now all of a sudden you're wrestling and have an opportunity to go ahead and score. Maybe the Merkel position yeah, here with that head and arm. With, with 
Yeah. No, gets out. Nice job. Well, Both efforts. Rutherford wanted out of that. He understood that head and arm position to give up a takedown. Sorensen just getting ready to slip the leg in, just like his uh, lighter weight teammate, Corey Clark, from last year, who won a national championship. But that's the wisdom of the high trophy winner. You know, he felt danger in that position, gave it up. Now he's holding position. Takedown to try to tie it and go to overtime. Sorensen, short time. Just cannot get past the defense of Rutherford. Trying to win his third straight Big Ten championships. And Penn State has their first winner of the championships. Zane Rutherford winning his third Big Ten title. Not a lot of points on the board, Tim, but what a war that was physically. You know, that was two, two guys, warriors. Yeah, two guys putting it out there. Zane Rutherford is your champion for Penn State at 149 pounds. He's coming along with uh, Shane Sparks, and Shane, you've got the champ. All right, Zane, you've really owned this weight class the better part of the last three years. How do you keep your guard up when everybody's gunning for you to maintain the level of excellence that you do? Yeah, uh, get my mouthpiece out. Uh, I just think about, you know, not who's gunning for me or anything like that. Just getting the most out of, out of myself that I can every day and, you know, competing with gratitude, so that's what I'm focusing on every day. Three-time Big Ten champion. You'll gun for your third NCAA championship. You're a world team member. Extremely humble. But what are you most proud of in the career you've had up to this point? Just the way I wrestled, you know, before this match. I was just thinking about not maybe winning or losing, but, uh, you know, the character that I show on the mat or, you know, kind of the more important things, you know, wrestling with gratitude and just, just enjoying this experience. So that's what I'm more proud of, the things I've valued. Been a lot of fun to watch you, Zane. Thank you. Thank you. The Zane train keeps on chugging. TJ? Shane said it all. He's your Big Ten champion, Zane Rutherford, at 149 pounds. Well, here's your 157 pounds, Micah Jordan, the younger brother of Bo Jordan, going up against Alec Pantaleo. And these guys have met before, but here's how they got here. You take a look at that big fall that uh, Jordan was able to get against Kemmerer, and it pretty much a uh, tight match at that point in time, really early. There wasn't much scoring at that point, but big fall really set the semifinals on fire. And then Pantaleo, of course, uh, getting the forfeit, Jason Noel forfeiting down to uh, sixth place. And uh, actually, uh, out, uh, Kemmerer did the same thing. Michael Kemmerer put my hand forward down, forwarded down to sixth place as well. So we'll have two sixth place well, finishers hand, in the championships, and no fifth place finisher. There you go. And Micah center. Jordan out of St. Paris, Ohio, St. Paris Graham High School, coached by his dad, Jeff. Powerhouse High School program up against Fingers. Alec Pantaleo, the redshirt junior out of Canton, Fingers. Michigan, Canton High School. They've met twice this year. Pantelio's had his way, keep working, winning 10-3 and 12-7. to yeah, seven. Well, Center. little con contrast of styles. If, uh, get in the middle. Micah get Jordan the middle. really likes to get the attacks off. We'll go ahead and attack below the waist uh, quite a bit in his matches. Nice little single leg finish that he has. Pantelio will hold position a little bit more. And uh, if you make a bad shot on him, action, he's got an excellent whip work. over. And he's got a beautiful Nothing. double leg as well. Micah Jordan was a Big Ten finalist last year at 149 and also an All-American. Now he's bumped up a weight of 157 pounds. They're a bit stronger up here. Yeah, they look good in this weight class. I mean, it's Keep just working, nice fellas. to see guys kind of finally get into their their, their range. And sometimes you, you, in order to be competitive, you got to take a little bit of weight off and to be competitive in these college programs. And Micah Jordan has certainly been that, but both guys look really good up here. It would be nice if, if, if you could move up as, as, as your that. body Work gets bigger. Nice to have that luxury. But these teams that they represent are so darn tough. I mean, you got somebody up in front of you that, that hey, I, I, well, I guess I got to go back down the road. So. Pantelio also, as you said, was an All-American at 149, but two years ago, and redshirted last year. Third in the Big Tens two years ago, sixth in the NCAA. So it's Pantelio difficult to get out of that head-hands defense, good square stance. You can see a little bit more motion. Watch the face, gentlemen. Him. I look for him when he gets active with his hands, he starts shooting. 
There is that near on far leg. Nice little Control. counter shot there by Pantaleo. Coming up Work in the over under it. position, both or guys. I don't think either one of these guys Work really wants to be it. in this position. Shot, counter shot there. Less than Again, 30, both less guys than working 30. a little bit forehead to forehead. What I like to see from both of them, they're not getting tied up ear to ear. The temptation is to go ahead and get ear to ear where both guys are just really working upper body, but they're a little bit less likely to do that. Micah Jordan with a sudden pin against Kemmer last night to keep uh, working. Just a stunning pin for Jordan coming into the uh, finals. Break. Stay uh, we're center, looking guys. at 140 or 157 Choice. pounds right now. Red to first, green. The 141 green pound green. place winners and qualifiers right there I'll on tell you your screen. Get Ohio State. Lee from Penn State third, third all the way down to Deal from Maryland down. eighth. Right, They're your State. Easy. top eight qualifiers and place winners here at the Big Ten Championships. On their way to the NCAAs in you Cleveland. Mentioned, yeah, you mentioned, Tim, the semifinals yesterday. That was just an emotional charge into this crowd when Micah Jordan was able to go ahead and get that fall against Kemmerer. That's fingers. what these semifinals are like. It'd be a pleasure to be able to show them sometime to the rest of the world. You know, by, by, but it's, it's so cool because it's just the type of wrestling that you're going to see in the quarterfinals of the national tournament and maybe even more so working, because the intensity working. of the rivalries and the relationships and, and, and things that go on you know between the corners it's it's just uh it's just it's, it's a blast to watch and next year it's going to be in minnesota minneapolis let's just on that camp. yes so it's must Center. see tv motion, motion. Now, Micah Jordan, and we'll talk about this, but Micah Jordan had the stunning pin, the upset of the favored Michael Kemmerer from Iowa. His brother, three-time Big Ten finalist, Bo Jordan, was stunned and did not make the finals for the first time in his career. And uh, we'll talk about that more as we get to 174. Jordan brothers hoping to get in the finals together. It didn't happen. Boy, the high highs and the low lows that the Jordan family experienced yeah. yesterday in a very short period of time was amazing. Get out of the face. We'll talk about this later too, but Bo Jordan uh, reacting with such class as you expect, because that's the way most of the time Keep it working. is in this sport. Oh, you, you, hey, a week and a half from now, I mean, it, that, that, ma that match means nothing. Nice job by Pantelo getting on the leg. 22 seconds left. Good job of getting to the far yeah. ankle. He collects the two points there. If he can stay in the top position. And he, he's a good rider, Pantelio, but what he just accomplished there is what he's been working for the entire time, Jen, to get that low shot and execute for the takedown. And good job of staying in the top position. He understood how important that was for the strategy of this match. And this Michigan crowd has been active all tournament, had a lot to cheer about. Greg takes down. Joe McFarland, the head coach, 19th year at Michigan. Right, he was a four-time All-American, no two-time Big Ten champion. And Got it? Uh, he won the Let Big Ten set. championship right here at Michigan State. State set. Cover Michigan. Easy. You're looking at him Let's there, go. the Silver Fox. Easy. In 1984, I said, too, 1, he was a Big Ten 2, champion, and he won it right here at Michigan State in 1984. Another coach, head coach of a Big Ten team, won his, won a Big Ten championship that year, Dwayne Goldman for Indiana. Easy. Silver Fox is the man. I, yeah. I don't know anybody that doesn't like the Silver Fox. He's just a great guy, a lot of fun. See Josh Trello, one of his, uh, you know, he's got Still a solid in. assistant coaching staff there working with him out in Michigan, great facilities, and they've been really put together at the public team this year. Two of the red shirts from last year, Pentelio and Kuhn, in the finals of the Big Ten. That's, that's the way they planned it, you know? Uh, like Hannibal from the A-team, and lo he loves it when a plan comes, comes together. Take a look at Micah Jordan's path to victory right now. Good quick escape right there. So 133 
left in the match, and he's got riding time not a factor. And, you know, we talked about keys to winning championships. The pace of this match has not gone your way. You've got to do something to Stay change right it. We saw work. Pletcher do Don't that at 33, center. where he started working the head a lot. Fingers. Micah Jordan's got to do the same. And Stalemate. tough no task change. against Pantaleo Stalemate. is really tough head hands defense. Guys, he didn't get out of position very much. 112. And we saw him kind of whip over Jason Nolf a, a couple times in that uh, uh, match that he had. But Mike understands this kid's won a lot of championships himself. And he understands that doesn't care if he gets beat by four points or five points. It's just all about trying to take home a title right now. Right now he needs a takedown. Michigan and Ohio State, doesn't matter what sport. It's heated rivalry all the time. We're going to end the day with one of those big Michigan-Ohio State working. rivalries between the Olympic champion Kyle Snyder and Adam Kuhn. Jordan cannot get tied up in here very much. He's got to keep on moving him out. Nice job of circling back in. Tight circle. Now all of a sudden, Jordan's on the edge of the mat. But nobody's going to finish anything right there. So this is going to be huge commitment time by Jordan. What's he going to do? Three to one, Pentelio from Michigan fingers. leads. Jordan needs a takedown late here in the third period to take it to sudden victory. Got to go left, go right, go low, snap down, but not straight forward. Yeah, and that's where Pantaleo is really, boy, jumped on the shot of his own right there. That's well done. Keeping Jordan off balance. Well done. And right up the road from Ann Arbor, Alec Pantelio. Michigan's second Big Ten champion of the tournament at 157 pounds. He's your champion. Michigan helping out Penn State in one of those not so fast moments. Team title still lies in the, in the, in the balance here, but uh, good solid win by Alec Pantaleo. And he's with Shane Sparks. Well, Alec, congratulations. Big Ten champion for the Wolverines. What was clicking for you these past couple of days in East Lansing? Uh, you know, it's the past two weeks, really. You know, it's postseason, it's, I learned my, my, the hard way my freshman year. Anyone can beat anyone, you know, so. Just my last two weeks of training, I've been wrestling the best guys in the room. Kellen, Josh, Logan, and I know I've been just getting progressively better because I have the right mindset. So, for me, it's just all autopilot from here on, you know. it's. Had a rough season to begin with, but it's how you end, you know, it's not how you finish, or not how you start. So. What have you come to truly appreciate as far as what it takes to win at this level? Very few people understand it. Well, you know, it's just when you surround yourself with higher level people, you just move to there. You know, it's like, I, I haven't noticed a difference just because I surround myself with four-time Big Ten champs and, you know, like, national panelists, national champs. So, for this, this is all just like autopilot for me, you know I mean? There's, I mean, we had a simulation days the other day and I was literally wrestling Kellen, to Josh, you know, like to Logan, it's just, it's, those are the best guys in the nation. So this, anyone I wrestle out here is not as good as those guys, you know, so. I full confidence in my coaching staff, and my partners and everything. Congratulations yeah, in you, Cleveland. Sir. Yeah, good seeing you, man, good seeing you, thank you. Thanks, Alec. Yeah, thanks, man. And today's feature match is brought to you by PerlerWrestling.com. For camps, private team camps, and DVDs, it's Perler Wrestling. Wow. Two national champions, Isaiah Martinez, Vincenzo Joseph. You take a look at these guys, how they got here. I mean, these were not easy matches. Look at these quarterfinal matches. Martinez, seven to four. You look at uh, Marinelli and Massa, which was just a war. Joseph, 18 to 10. He got put to his back twice in that match. Joseph and Massa, just a tight one. Martinez and Lewis with the six, big six point move by Martinez was the difference in that match. And that brings him to this point. This weight class was a ball to watch. Now we get two national champions going against each other in the finale. Starting this match is like lighting the fuse of a stick of dynamite, and you don't know how long the fuse is. Here yeah. we go. You know, the things to look for here in this match, in my opinion, are, you know, nobody, everybody knows that, 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 that watches wrestling closely, that Isaiah Martinez loves that left-handed underhook. 
guard. And right? if he can get that, he whips you across to the other side. He can go ahead and jack you up with it. But he's, it's, it's almost been a little bit of, a, you know, Chenzo Joseph's natural style is go overhook with that right arm, and that's how he was able to get that inside trip in the match in the national final. So he held his own and uh, was able to hit that inside trip. It was a natural motion here for him. So, you know, it just, it never is easy. Good guys show up, all right? And that's what's happened to Isaiah Martinez, a guy that last year was looking, you know, to win the third national title and maybe a chance this year to go for four. Right the center, this guy, right the center. Central Joseph, who has just been phenomenal and has really improved, I think, from last year's finals. Both these wrestlers could be called a freak of nature. They're so athletic. Yeah, well, here's now to see that uh, Imar is really crowded with that underhook. He loves to have that position. He understands that as well as anybody. Joseph blocking out with his head. See how his head is blocking out right there? He's able to clear out of that underhook. That's going to be pretty important all through this match. Uh, we got a little blood on the eye there. Well, that's Joseph uh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Central Catholic National Champion, All-American as a freshman last year. Isaiah Martinez out of Lamore, California, Lamore High School. He's a three-time Big Ten champion, two-time NCAA champion, and runner-up, trying to become the second today and only the 16th ever four-time Big Ten champion. And if he wins it, he'll be the only athlete-coach combination to do so because his coach, Jim Heffernan, is one of those four-timers. Pretty hard to duplicate that. So, you know, and if you're somebody like Isaiah Martinez, you've been thinking about this match for a long time. They didn't get an opportunity Work to, that, to, to uh, meet in the regular no. season. And, uh, you know... And you, you, you've got, you have questions. Well, should I stay with that underhook? Do I, how do I get that? How do I stay out of this inside trip? You know, there's questions that have to be answered. And sometimes you can only answer those questions in competition. Right back on it, but Joseph blocking out with that head. You can see where Martinez is staying with his technique. And a lot of times, you know, kind of what we saw with Sorensen and Rutherford, you got to stick with what brought you here. Don't change up too much until somebody proves otherwise. Martinez has been the aggressor to this point in the match. Really working the head of Joseph. 50 seconds left in the first period here at 165. Right there. Now this is a position that's a little more favorable for Joseph. He's got the head position. He's got his chest up. There's been a lot of talk about there that... Uh, Joseph has been thrown to his back a few times, you know, in the regular season. Work the center, guys. Stay I, I, in the center. You know, it happened against uh, Marinelli, and Stay in the center. I just like the fact that he's fearless up there. Short time here, 20 seconds left in the first period. Both guys showing why they're here. Look at the quickness there by Joseph, warding off that shot by Martinez. He's got the arm around the, the back. He hasn't been able to get the head position to go along with the underhook. There's the really commitment there to the underhook and slide by. A lot of aggression by Imar in the first period, but no score, 0-0. Zero, zero. Joseph chooses down, will begin the second period. Two national champions. Ram tough. Right cover. Banging heads here at 165 pounds. Got to come to stop, right? You rolled. Our first of two matches with two okay. national champions sure at 184. We'll you know, see it again okay. with Bo Nickel set? and Miles set. Martin. Cover. Yep. Joseph, such One. a cool customer. Two. You know, just. Imar with the solid mat return, in, really Work working hard. In. You know, and I think that you, you made the point, Tim. I think Martinez has worked harder in the match so far, right? A little bit more aggressive, and, and but Joseph has really impressed us through the course of the season. How loose he is, how relaxed he is out there. We'll see if that helps him in the third period. Stay calm and execute. Top man again. Yeah. Top man again. Go there. You over there. Go over there. 
They're going to check on that. Wave it off. No caution. So I, everybody's looking over at the other mat, and there's no match going on. <laughs> That's it over there. It's one in the direction where there's nobody wrestling it on mat three. Well, freebie there. One, two. Good lift there by Martinez. Reminds me of 149. A lot of work going on here at top and to bottom. Yeah. Once again, to Joseph coming One, up to his feet. Two. These are the these are the parts Very of the match. I notice how Joseph did get bogged down right there at the edge of the mat, allowing Martinez to collect a few more seconds of riding time. The mat savvy of Green Joseph side. there came in ready to go. Won the NCAA title last year as a redshirt freshman. Both of these guys did. Neymar winning it as a freshman and sophomore and being beaten last year in the finals by Joseph, the freshman. One of five Penn State national champions. Another good solid lift right there. This has not been just 45 seconds of riding. This has been a lot of four or five mat returns and then going off the mat. Working a plan, Jim. Well, I, I mean, think you have to do this right now. There's been no score in the first period. You got to be able to try to stay on top as long as you can. Green set, red. You know, but pretty soon if you keep doing this, even if you give up a stall warning, it's out, you might want to well stay in this top position. Nice switch there by Joseph. Martinez rides the hips a little bit better. And he's so strong with that left arm. Martinez never lifted weights before he came into Illinois, and still he was the strongest man in the room when he stepped into the room. Yeah, he's just really, that, that, that stop right there of Joseph was critical in this match. Now you see Joseph starting to get to his feet. A little bit of spread on the hips right there. 120 of riding time, not bad. If that's the, the, the determinant in this match, pretty big. Isaiah Martinez, the three-time Big Ten champion, a big ride. He, he uh, just, Tim, it just gives him a window now with that extra 20 seconds of riding time. If he can get out in 20 seconds, he ends up you know, collecting a point, and now Joseph has to go after him. Just gives him an opportunity to find another way to win this match besides just being on the feet. It was like he had 120 on his radar because he's a lot different than a minute seven, a minute eight. You're right, Jim. And so right now it's going to go to the third period. Two seconds left in the second period. Two seconds, guys. Joseph leads 1-0. Two seconds, guys. All right. Isaiah Martinez Set. with riding time and the choice to begin right, the third enjoy. period. And if you're Joseph, you understand that, hey, I just got to go Red, ahead and keep him down for at least that, that 20 seconds. Red, choose his bottom. All right, guys, let's go. Your place finishers at 157. All qualify for the NCAAs. Set, green. Good explosive stand up by Martinez. He creates hip separation, and so far it's worked. So Give right himself now, options. One to one on the scoreboard, but Martinez with the riding time. And he's come right back into that underhook. Now he's chasing Joseph down with that slide by. Man, you never count Joseph out. Hand. He can score at the end. What he likes to do, Joseph, he will also attack that back leg there with the knee pad. He's got a nice little high crotch shot to that to go along with his inside trip. So look for that. The aggressor certainly on the feet all the way through this match so far. Martinez. Yeah, very, not necessarily a guy who's known for his tactics, but he's been very solid right now. He's given himself a path to victory here with hand, the riding guys. time, the quick hands, skate, guys. The hand. being aggressive here with his underhook. No stalling calls, nor should there be. The man stepping forward has been Martinez. And less than a minute left. Can Imar win his fourth Big Ten championship? 50 seconds left. And right now he's shallowing up that underhook. See how he's kind of coming, he's not going deep with it. He's kept it around the, the scapula, the shoulder blade up there. He's using that to pull him, uh, Joseph down. I look for Joseph to basically hit a three shot right here at that back leg. There it is, right there. Got it. Wow. An opportunity to score right there. Great no job, Martinez, dropping back through. What a 
what a roll through by Martinez. Yeah. Tremendous shot and defense. Well timed as well, okay? Take a look at the replay on this. Commitment by Joseph, driving back through, shoelaces up, getting himself up. Now he didn't anticipate the roll through, and Martinez was able to go ahead and get to a neutral position. Now he's working hard. Ten Joseph. seconds. Ten seconds. Getting on his own offense with that underhook. No stall warnings. And two points for an exclamation mark on the fourth Big Ten Championship for Isaiah Martinez for the Fighting Illini. History is made four times. Isaiah Martinez, your winner at 165 pounds. Tell you what, it, we've grown to appreciate the great athlete that Isaiah Martinez is, but he did a wonderful job with his tactics there. Winning a national, winning his Big Ten championship is just fantastic performance. Isaiah Martinez, the second four-timer of, of this tournament, and he's with Shane Sparks right now. Isaiah, congratulations. Workmanlike, gritty performance. What about this fourth Big Ten title? So gratifying. Uh, it doesn't mean a damn thing to me until I win a national championship. It's all focusing on. What's it been like for you this last year, coming in, not being the reigning national champion, and the motivation behind it this last year? I'm hungry. It's been great. I love it. I love this feeling. I want it all the time. Looking forward to seeing you in Cleveland. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. We're getting ready for 174 pounds where Penn State will have Hall, Mark Hall, their national champion from last year as a true freshman, up against Miles Amin for Michigan. Michigan's third finalist looking to make it three in a row. Well, the big thing here in this match, when you see Hall cruising, there was a tough match here with Sebastian, Johnny Sebastian Northwestern, but the bottom half of that bracket, I mean, surprised everybody here with uh, the the with Jordan. It was uh, you know, solid technique, was able to put him on play. place. This place was up for grabs at that point. And, you know, Michigan has had a fine tournament. This Mark Hall is something special here to watch. He's so cool out there, so poised. It's going to be a tough battle for Amin, but, uh, you know, he's got the capability of being tough in the top position, go after his own offense. You have to find a way to deal with the scrambling ability of Mark Hall. And the riding ability, because last time they met, it was six to five, it was close, go, but Mameen got hey, ridden guys. by Hall, and he's not gonna be able to get ridden by him and win this match. This is a great matchup, the only matchup this year between the two of them. Six five, a win for the national champion, Mark Hall for Penn State. Nice duck attempt there by Hall. But you're right, Tim, that's the, the, been the improvement of, of Mark Hall, I think, over from last year. His ability, and I think that's, that's just all these Penn State wrestlers working for falls, you know. Got tougher in the top position and locking up a lot of cradles. Miles Amin from Brighton, Michigan, Detroit Catholic Central. He's a redshirt sophomore, Mark Hall. Sophomore out of Apple Valley, Minnesota. Being in on a shot, immediately Hall making them feel pretty uncomfortable, letting them in, and then been locking pretty tight around that left leg. And if you step up here, you actually make it tighter. And I look at the left point, the left shoulder here for Amin. If that shoulder falls out to the outside, which it's done at this point, all right, now he's be able to collect it back to the inside. Allows him to go ahead and, and continue to drive forward, maybe come out the back door. He's done a good job of getting to his feet. Roll through. Again, you've got to anticipate that. Look at the left leg. If Amin can get it back, he can put himself in a pretty good position. Good battle by Hall. Boy, he's a great scrambler. Both, good job by both guys in that situation. No points scored there in that scramble. A minute and a half gone in the first period. In the national champion at 174. And uh, Hall, Amin last year as a redshirt freshman, fourth at the NCAAs, third here at the Big Tens. Nice sequence there by Amin, though. He's able to do a little misdirection and get to the back leg of Hall. And just when it looked like Hall had cut the corner on him, he was able to adjust and come out the back door. A little bit quicker on the anticipation of the roll through, he probably collects the points. Hall's second. 
people expecting to have a rematch of last year's Big Ten championships where Bo Jordan of Ohio State defeated Mark Hall. But a stunning pin for Amin over Bo Jordan sends him to the finals. And two All-Americans going at it right here. Penn State already has a championship with Rutherford. Zane Rutherford. And Amin is also doing a nice job of not pushing into you put Hall, if you push into him, he's gonna grab elbow control. He's got a beautiful duck under. Right there off that elbow control, he'll duck to that uh, to going to his left. Right there. He slides so well to his shots. Yeah. I mean, it's just so fluid. But but Amin is the one that's really mm -hmm. kind of not giving him that by push, not pushing into him when he's giving up the control. So good look at the scramble here by both wrestlers. Here's the and got to anticipate that roll through. You can say well, what what's the guy, what can the guy do and when a guy rolls through like that? You got to get your legs back. Amin just a hair slow on that. Wasn't able to finish up. Good work by Hall to get neutral. Here's the difference maker right here. Can Amin ride Hall? He's got to, and it, Hall does a great job of hipping out and getting the one. Not many people get out of that. They usually end up on their backs right there. Hall took a lot of risk. Yeah. He was on three points right there, but uh, you break one of them down, and, and he's going right to his back. Pretty solid work right there. Good back pressure. Again, just like we saw in the, in the, in the previous match, a quick es uh, escape. Well, we actually saw it with a uh, previous match with Imar. The quick escape may make the difference because we already know that Hall can ride. Mark Hall, 27-0 this year, undefeated. Hall that time showed that duck under. Again, and wouldn't be surprised if he's misdirecting right now. He showed the duck under to the left. We'll see if he goes right. Third and fifth place matches going on side by side. A little duck to the right that time. So not any deep penetrating shots, but, but when Hall wants to go, he can attack below the knee. And, and again, he will picture totally like commit to that shot. He'll sometime. go almost all the way to his stomach to get to the leg. Kale Sanderson in the background there. Four time undefeated NCAA champion. Six of seven national championships as a team at Penn State. You know, here they are in second place, but I don't see anything, I don't see any chinks right now in the armor of Penn State. Their, their path is still going to be with their stars in the NCAA tournament, getting, you know, the, the, all their guys to the finals, and if they can go ahead and, and do that, get a little help. Shakur Rashid making the finals at 97 it was, it was big for them. Nevels looks good at solid at, uh, heavyweight. You know, one of the best ever right there when you're talking about both as a competitor and as a coach, Kale Sanderson for Penn State. Look for Hall now to go ahead and work the mat returns. Sliding through, nice little roll through action right there. And and a reversal. reversal. Big, yeah. big turn of events for Miles Amin to go out front. And if he can get a decent start, it's one thing that Hall, if he can get a decent, take a look at the standing Granby. We know when a guy sucks you in like that around the waist, that's what you're left with. You can't really separate the hips. You've got to go ahead and roll. Quick escape. Two to two, no riding time involved here. Confidence builders, though, for, oh, nice duck right there, right into the head of the outside shot. Look for the cradle right away. Now he's going to do a dump right there and ends up sliding back behind. Has enough weight on the hands. Yep, that's two. How often do you start in a takedown call on Mark Hall and said, from the duck? Yes. Wow. You know it's coming? And he, and he, he didn't. He, he didn't try to go ahead, throw the elbow by. It was throw the elbow by to try to get to the leg, right? Because Amin wasn't pushing into him, you know, the way you'd normally expect, like we saw with the duck that he hit against Bo Jordan in the, in the dual meet. Where he was able to get all the way around behind him because Jordan was pushing into him. So 
So Mark Hall comes back from a, a reversal against him by Miles Amin. Gets the escape and the takedown. Here we go. Take a look at this. So Amin is not really leaning in a little bit right there, but look at this work. Getting all the way out to the ankle, elbow deep. Starts to go to the cradle here and then slides back with the uh, dumps him on. Runs the pipe, as we call it. Runs it to the back. The leg that's up. Runs it in that direction. Collects the two. So for Amin, with 51 seconds left, right? Gets the escape. 4-3 score. And now how do you score on probably the best scrambler in the country at this weight? Well, we've seen strange things happen all weekend, and it happens in the Big Ten Wrestling Championships. Mean has given himself a chance by keeping this match in range. Short time. 20 seconds left. A shot by Amin stalling on Mark Hall. The next stall call would be, would tie up the match. Amin trying to get past the defense. He's got, he's got to take him straight out. Nice circling. job by Hall to circle back in, right? Yeah, he did circle back in. Holding position on the edge. Crowd's not going to like this. No, but, but he did a tremendous yeah. job there. Yeah. I mean, he just knows where he is. Yes, he does. And your champion is Mark Hall. And he wins for his first Big Ten championship. And he's jawing here with the Michigan fans. But... <laughs> So Penn State gets their second championship. Mark Hall, the national champion, is now a Big Ten champion. And Penn State's second champion. And he's going to come over here. We're hoping to have him with Shane Sparks. And he is with Shane right now. All right, Mark, another hard-fought battle. What were some of the smaller intricacies in that, in that match that, that proved to be the difference? Just keep wrestling. Uh, Staying in my own head, relaxing. That's pretty, pretty much it, just having fun. You've had so much success during the course of your career. What have you learned from that success? Um, uh, it only keeps coming if I want it to. Uh, it's never handed to me. Um, it's always working. Uh, don't stay stagnant in your career. I really think, uh, you know, just all that success, it comes because I want it to come. I don't, it's not easy, it's not like, something that just is handed to me. So just keep working and, and uh, doing all the good things that I do and, and uh, brushing off the bad things. You know, I'm not perfect. And uh, you know, that's what keeps it coming. It's always fun to watch you. Congratulations, Mark. Thanks. He was perfect this weekend. He goes undefeated. He wins the Big Ten Championship. He's your 174 pound Big Ten Champion. He's Mark Hall, 184 now. Bo Nickel, Miles Martin. Miles Martin, the only one to have multiple victories over Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel, the national champion. Miles Martin, two years ago, a national champion at 174. Nickel winning at 184 last year. Here's how they got there. Well, you take a look at Martin at the bottom half of that bracket here. Nice win over Abinator that was really solid. And then uh, Nickel, you know, you take a look at Emory Parker, that's an improving athlete out there, did a nice job of staying in that match, so he's not well, not easy pass to get to this point. It seems like Martin always saves some of his best wrestling for the championship round, and uh, you know, the confidence that Bo Nickel has out there and his abilities as a complete wrestler, and he certainly is. He can do just anything out there, attack low, you know, short offense, he can throw, he can ride when he needs to, he can get out from underneath. Bo Nickel from Allen, Texas, from a wrestling family. His grandfather, Gary, a longtime wrestling coach in Wyoming, and his dad, Jason, a wrestling coach. And Bo Nickel, a national champion for Penn State. Going up against Miles Martin, a junior, Penns Grove, New Jersey, McDonough High School, or ben McDonough School in Maryland. Had a nice talk with his dad, Greg, yesterday flew in to watch his son and I said what's the best part of Miles Martin and he said it's not even part of wrestling he never gave me a problem he said I was a football basketball coach but he was too young to play football and the wrestling coach wanted him and he fell in love with the sport at six years old Bo Nickel in on a shot Nothing. attacking below the knee but here you see that Martin's basically stepping back up he's got weight on the hands the referees called giving the takedown and this is where 
Nickel was able to go ahead and really do some damage in the first match, being effective, turning Martin in the top position. Getting that early takedown was huge, so. Now, you know, I think that, that that a guy like Bo Nickel, with all the things that he that he does out there, he's turned himself into a, a three or four, maybe a five takedown guy. You've got to take Action, him down gentlemen. that much, Action. right, to be able to beat him. And that's, I, I don't think I can pay a higher compliment to a guy with what he what he does out there. Is that when you know that you have to be taken down four or five times to go ahead and win, it's a lot of pressure. You get the first one, maybe the second one. But his style right now is putting a lot of pressure on guys to be able to not only get takedowns, which are difficult enough, but you've got to do it multiple times because he can get out so quick and he's tough in all positions. Martin was third in the Big Tens two years ago at 174 and then went ahead and won a national championship. Last year, second here in the Big Tens, finished fifth. Watch the hands to the face. Look for Martin to be a little bit more measured. You know, 2-1 is not necessarily a bad uh, position. Going in, if he can collect a little, get something going here right at the end of the period, something explosive, something to get Bo Nickel off of his feet where you have a short amount of time to be able to keep him down. And Nickel doesn't wait for him. He doesn't wait for Martin to get on his offense. Ties him up. Bill Nicol, a national champion at 184 last year. Second at 174, two miles Martin two years ago. He's a junior as well. What a rivalry. Met seven times, the record five and two in favor of the Nittany Lion. That's Tom Ryan, we talked about him earlier. He has built a program that keeps on ticking and rebuilding. Well, I think that the best nice job here by Martin be able to go ahead and kind of catch Nickel off to the side. Nice recovery yeah, by Nickel. That's what I'm talking about. Beautiful front Man. trip to go ahead and put Martin down into place there. But compliment I can give to, to what Tom has been able to accomplish at Ohio State. His program is working in all Same levels. Thing, no I mean, Same the thing. international level, the people he surrounded himself with, uh, the you know, the, the life lessons Stop, he tries to instill in these guys, the sportsmanship that they all display out Stop. there, it's just been, uh, you know, it's, it's a total program, and the university better be very proud of what the work that uh, Tom Ryan has put into and they've this proven program it. Yeah, competitive. With, with the uh, support from the administration and the new building, they're going to have a tremendous facility to wrestle One, in. Neutral, and, uh, center. So center it. Tom uh, Ryan has brought a lot of pride to the Buckeyes, and uh, it's gone. It's not gone unnoticed because uh, yeah. they're investing in it. Yeah, and he's not alone, of course. I mean, there's some great coaches doing a super job, particularly in this conference. But uh, it's he's got it going right now. And sometimes you got to pinch yourself when you have athletes of this caliber. That hey, I've got a group of guys. Can I ever replace them? You know. I'm sure, Kale Sanderson feels the same way about his crew. Good scramble effort there. Nice job of cracking down there by Bo Nickel. See how he reached for the head, head hunted. Martin felt the danger, gave up the points. On, Giving up was minute. probably a bad word right there, but, he, but you know, just trying to keep himself from stay, staying in this match. He didn't, there wasn't any quit in him. It was just gave up two instead of more. Yes. 45 seconds left in the second period. Two national champions going at it. Bo Nickel, last year's national champion at this weight class, out in front four to two, and seems to have control of the match right now, Jim. And covering him very well, covering Martin. Action, gentlemen. He impressed Action, me so gentlemen. much last year in his effort, and I've said this several times on the BTN broadcast that we do, the fact that last year going up against the two-time national champion, Gabe Dean, he went after him, right? You know, Bo was known for an upper body guy, and he went after him and attacked below the knee. And one of the toughest guys to, you know, to score on in the country, moving up a weight. It's just that he can beat you in so many ways. Choice. It's just. Last time they met was in the dual meet, uh, Penn State defeating Ohio State, and uh, Bo Nickel getting a major decision at the buzzer 
which was obviously a significant extra point for the Nittany Lions. Hands-free stand-up. See, I stood up right there, but kept his hands free. You know, if you try to come in and drive into him, he's gonna wheel his arm back up over the top and lock you up and throw. Martin has the respect for those hips and nickels and basically cut him. Center. Martin cha Martin's changing the pace of the match now a little bit. You can see a little more intensity. He needs to get his shot off. Moving with a little bit more intensity. Right, fake one direction, go the other. We've seen Martin hit something big in this rivalry before, and it's going to take something big here with approaching a minute left in regulation. But I don't think that, that, that Nickel has to play that upper body game right now if Martin wants to take him into it. Good job there by Martin, driving through. Going to look to his corner. Yep, so he's, he's going to go ahead and cut him and see if he's done that. If there's any look, he's got a good look at him right now. He's looking back over to his corner and sees Coach Ryan. He's got the two-on-one locked up. And the referee, Angels Rivera, is going to give him a break here with the stalemate. So you can't break the riding time. We know that. So you really got to kind of let him up, try to maybe take him to his feet, to his from his feet to his back. 5-4. Nickel leading, and well, I like what I saw there from Martin. Going to give Nickel the escape. Six to four, but effectively down three points. Writing time is locked up for Nickel. So effectively it's seven to four right now. Nickel leads the Buckeye, Miles Martin. Chasing him a little bit. Stalling. Yep, a stall warning and a double leg shot right there. If he gets a, another warning, short time. Nickel. Playing it safe right now, choosing to hold position in the center of the mat. There'd be a time in wrestling where that would definitely be called stalling. Yeah, yeah. There was a time. <laughs> wow. But impressive win, workmanlike for the national champion from last year at 184, Bo Nickel. He is the Big Ten. Champion for the Nittany Lions over his rival, Miles Martin. Two Warriors, two national champions, one Big Ten champion tonight, Bo Nickel. Nittany Lions get their third Big Ten champion, and Bo Nickel, the Big Ten and national champions, with Shane Sparks. All right, Bo, you and Martin, obviously very familiar with each other. Anything notable to your approach, having the bullseye on your back? Not really. I feel like that every match. Everybody that wrestles can give me their best effort, so I just got to go out there and give my best effort every match. Jim spoke about it during the broadcast. You're high pace. You let it fly. You're fearless, but at the same time, very smart. Speak about that balance. Yeah, you know, no need to take un unneeded risks. And, you know, there's time to take risks and there's time not to take risks, but that third period was pretty bad. It was pretty slow. I mean, if I get a take down there, I'm pretty sure I'm getting the major. So that's the difference in some team points, which, I mean, I'm kind of disappointed myself for that, but I don't know. That's about it. Congratulations on another Big Ten title. Nice job. Thanks. Bo Nichols' second Big Ten title. He won at 174, and he now he's won at 184. He's your Big Ten champion at 184. And 197 pounds. Last year's freshman of the year. And the 97 pound champion, Colin Moore, going up against Shakur Rashid, who just sealed the deal to get this spot, Jim. You know, this is tough for Shakur Rashid. All the pressure making that spot and then coming into this tournament. He's been pretty effective here. Had a close match in the uh, against Chaconis, which we, I know is a pretty tough little wrestler. And then a nice match against Bruner. And Moore's had some tight matches as well. So you get into this championship match scenario here, the, the, the bouts tighten up, the familiarity increases. We're wrestling somebody for the second or third time. These two did meet during the dual meet. Of course, it was Anthony Kassar who had the big win. 
to help the, the Lions win the meet, but uh, this is Shakur up, Rashid's opportunity to go against who well, I think is one of the better 97 pounders in the country, obviously ranked number one for most of the time, but he's nope, another guy that, that really gets on his offense as, as quick as anybody in the weight class. You know, he's been a little uh, dinged up to, and I, I was just looking into it. He wrestled all the way through the year, in the summer, uh, you know, the, in the world trials, etc. and uh, that could take a toll on your body. It certainly can, and so, are you fresh? It's a nice job of stepping out of that uh, uh, go behind there by Shakur Rashid, and immediately, yes, Casey Cunningham. Go to each side. Come over and let us know exactly They're looking to see if the hands was on yeah. and it was, and was two points. And I'll tell you what, he's okay. really good at this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, I don't know if it was at Kale's hands or not, but it, we made a lot of fun out of that at the Ohio yeah, State meet. Mat, Coach Cunningham so was quick, with the, quick with the brick to throw the, uh, I, it didn't look like it to me. We're going to look for it. Like you said, Jim, these two have not met. <laughs> All right, take a look at the shot by Moore, the go behind. Oh, I don't know. That uh, could have been called. Yeah. It was not called. And they're going to check and see if there was there's indisputable evidence that the call would be overturned. S see it again, maybe. It was there, were weight on, there was weight on the hands, but, but was Shakur Rashid all the way around at the time? So we can maybe slow this down a little bit here. And is he behind? Right there, I think he could. He could I think it's a good make, call. Yeah, steps out of it pretty well. That was, yep. Referee Jeff Cook calls that no points. He did have weight on his head. I, I think the question was he wasn't all the way around behind the leg. So we get started again. Shakur Rashid, a couple of years ago, was a 165. And he's not even a 197 if on a way in, but boy, has he made a big splash, a great Southern scuffle, and made enough of an impression for uh, Kale Sanders to choose him as his 197 pounder, and they had three good choices. Yeah, and I think that, that what he needs to do, and you see him moving pretty well right now, he can't stand straight in front of uh, Colin Moore just like that with that Maryland follow. You see the size difference of these two guys. There's two points right there. Yep. And one point escape. Two points takedown for Colin Moore. One point escape, Rashid. Yeah, that's not, uh, he, he just can't stand straight in front. You see him moving to the side a little bit, but Moore will keep you in front of him. Works really well off that trap. When he traps that arm, and goes for that near arm, far leg, or fireman's carry. Rashid out of Quorum, New York, Longwood High School. He's a redshirt junior. Colin Moore, a sophomore out of Burbank, Ohio, Norway High School. And you mentioned that, that Rashid is giving up a few pounds in this weight class, but giving up some size. He hasn't had to cut much weight, but he's pretty lean anyway. You know, he's just not really going to carry a lot of that weight in his frame naturally. But what I've been impressed with him, when he gets in that top position, boy, a cradle. Here's where we're going to see the, the nice job of, of squaring off on that. He has the best cradle that we've probably we seen since stuck. Ed Roof. Let's work out of this. Improve. Ed Roof. Thank you. One of the four timers for Penn State as far as the Big Ten championships. He and David Taylor winning it in the same year. That's the last time two were became four timers in the same tournament. And that has happened in 2018 with Nathan Tomasello and Isaiah Mar Martinez. Good there work, work by Moore getting to the shot. You know he's hot, holding hot to that we can improve. left Let's arm do it. Rashid pretty Keep tightly action. so he can't drift to his right. Do the go behind. 40 seconds, 40, 40. Stay out of face. Good work. Again, Rashid, he, he needs to be on the corner. Okay, see it right there? You see a clubs with the head right there. It creates a little angle. That's what you do when you're going up against, against a bigger guy. Work his head a little bit, in and out. Get more moving. He's speaking in general terms, that the, the bigger guy, the, the stronger athlete's going to have the advantage when you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe like that. Colin Moore, his high school's first ever state champion. Quite an athlete, conference 
Soccer player of the year, and a little slide by. Tried to come Opportunity up. at the end, but wasn't able to uh, hit it uh, in soon enough. Period Red ends. Serve, State, top kind of firm. interesting at that, uh, hit that with about bottom. 10 more seconds left. Yeah. He had an opportunity to score, sir. so. Second period, gentlemen. I'm not so Hands sure how committed line, Orr will be to the ride in okay, the top bottom, position. Show your set, top, go ahead. Set. Kind of, yep, so he gave up the escape, so 2-2. And if you're Shakur Rashid in Penn State, you're sitting there going, okay, you know, I'm in good position here. Can I stop this move right now? Because this is huge. Can Moore be able to go ahead and do it? Yep, he rolls him across his rear there, gets the two. Look at that commitment to the low-level shot, Jim. What an, ex he really executed it well. Yeah, he, he uh, a lot of that's just with the, how tight he keeps that arm with it with, on the carry arm and he's able to drive through with his lower body's in a position to be able to do it again nice slide or nice elbow tie duck with boot scoot action right there they call it and what we're seeing because we watch them a lot throughout the year but uh colin moore came through a rough period a rough period as far as you know not his body being banged up and just not wrestling as well as he has and he looks like he's back in peak uh, performance right now. I agree. Yeah. So, but I'm also uh, impressed with, you know, this was such an important decision for Kale to make. I mean, I don't know, you know, how, how, how you go about making it. it. It was as tough as they come, and there's only one guy that, that can really can make that. And that's the head coach, and you can, you know, determine on wrestle off. You can look at competition, but you got the nod, and, and really. Rashid is not only wrestling for himself out there, he's also wrestling for the other two guys in the room that he competed with That's to get point. the spot. Good point. I think there's that type of closeness yes. in that program there that, that, that that's an important thing for him. He knows he's representing not just himself out there or something, rep, rep, represent, representing the competition that those three guys have for the spot. Now, McCutcheon was a little bit dinked up, but certainly representing his teammate, Kassar. Kassar, the upset win, and then Kassar had the upset win against Colin Moore in the duel. Yeah, and when you can think about those types of things in the program, and somebody from the outside can readily recognize it, those are, you know, you know you've got good karma going on in, in your program, in your wrestling room. And you mentioned it when we were talking about Ohio State, but uh, Penn State, tremendous attitude, tremendous camaraderie, on and off the mat, representing the sport so well. Two wow. great teams. Great shot. Low level shot drives across. Well, covers for two. Colin Moore, another takedown. You know how patient he was there, Tim. He didn't try to overblow it and get himself into a scramble. He got to a point, good stopping point. He, he leaped out. He's kind of like that. Uh, oh, what's that show you see where they're on the water underneath and they have to go through the rings and they got you got to a certain spot. He rested for a little bit. Oh, yeah. and went, drove all the way through. Doing a nice job of staying out of that duck by that boot scoot action by Rashid, but again, not committing. When he didn't feel quite right, he just stayed patient, adjusted, and mowed him over. Care careful in the face, gentlemen, please. The Colin Moore that we can become used to seeing, stalking, taking territory, less than a minute left in the third period, and gaining steam. Yeah, and, and Rashid is just one takedown away right. from tying this and getting back into his best position. Straight on shot, counter shot there. He'll be patient. Crack down, look to, for him to shelf the Rashid's guy collects the right leg. Arm was, uh, the right arm is, is uh, three all the way across and referee Cook. Sealing the deal it looks like for Colin Moore. Yeah. Slowly move up. And that'll seal the deal for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and they are going to win their second Big Ten team championship in a row. Colin Moore, the Big Ten champion for the second year in a row. He won it as a freshman, freshman of the year. Now he wins it as a sophomore. That's the type of motion you like to see. 
repping his colors and looking to his fans. Yeah. And there's Logan Steber, the four-time national champion, four-time Big Ten champion. He's in the building. And now Ohio State has two with Nathan Tomasello, another four-timer, and the 197-pound Big Ten champion is with Shane. All right, Colin, two-time Big, Big Ten champion. What was key to the run to the top of the podium here this season? Oh, well, just keeping the course, you know. Season got a little bumpy towards the end. I never lost faith in myself. Never lost faith in my coaches, my team. Um, I can wrestle like that every time. Just about staying focused. You know, I lost focus for a little bit. I'm back. How did you get back on track? As you mentioned, tough four or five weeks, couple of tough losses, but definitely a learning lesson. How'd you get back on track? Just let go. Um, you know, you can't attach to wins, you can't attach to losses. So, you know, I pinned uh, hot Vegas, let that go. Lost twice, let that go. So just learning to just focus on my wrestling instead of, man, I gotta win this match or the team needs me or anything like that. Just focus on every position, every second. Congratulations. Thank you. TJ. This is the highlight. The Adam big man Coon. from Michigan, Adam Kuhn. Aerospace engineer, major, going up against the youngest American Olympic champion in history. You Michigan, know, Ohio State, it's gonna be a great one, Jim. It is, Tim, and you know, the big man, I mean, he's walking around at three bills. He cuts a little weight to get to 285. Kyle Snyder, last time they met, you know, I'm sure he would use this as an excuse, but uh, you know, travel 12 time zones to get back into the country a week right, earlier. At some point in time, some of that gets a little bit cumulative on you as far as traveling and competing. But he's also given up a solid 60 pounds to a guy that really can move as, uh, in, in some respects just as well. And, and uh, I'm really interested to see what the adjustments are that Snyder makes because this big man is dangerous. He moves well, he scrambles well. This big man is Adam Kuhn from Fowlerville, Michigan. Fowlerville High School, already a graduate student, aerospace engineer major, wants to be an astronaut. Well, he's too big, but he wants to be a part of a design team that helps big guys like him go into space, but he also wants to be an Olympic champion and NFL player, so high aspirations. And it's an understatement for Kyle Snyder, already world and Olympic champion from Woodbine, Maryland, Our Lady of Good Counsel High School, Kyle Snyder, the senior, both seniors. Michigan, Ohio State, the heavyweight, the final match of the Big Ten Championships here at the Breslin Center. And what makes Kuhn such a strong matchup here, a tough matchup for Snyder, is that his ability to be, a, you know, he's a solid, you know, uh, potential Work world team it. member Work in Greco and freestyle. You know, he, he has the ability to go ahead and go up her body. And he's been dominant when he gets his arms around somebody. Last time they met, Kuhn was able to pull off the upset with a, an incredible, tactical, well-executed match and he's going to have to have every second be the same way, keeping that uh, weight on top of Snyder. They met in the Big Ten Championships two, year ago, two years ago, Snyder winning seven to four. You see the size difference between the two fellas, and it's just, you know, Snyder at this point in time, working the upper body, not necessarily getting his vision on the shot yet, but of course, if the world champion can go ahead and attack both sides of the body. He has a nice swing single to that leg that does not have an knee pad. And he'll go ahead and attack straight on with a head to the outside shot with the, the leg that has the knee pad on it. And when he gets in there, Come on, that was the difference in the those. match last time that, that, that Snyder was in on, his, on the shot to the lead leg, but he couldn't finish it. You know, he, he, it was basically cleaning or deadlifting all that weight and just couldn't get the finish off. And once they hit the mat, it became advantage for Kuhn. So a little less activity from Snyder. I think that, that that shows the respect that he has for the lower body strength that Adam Kuhn has. Short time. Ohio State's 
won their second Big Ten team championship in a row. Let's not forget, four years ago, Adam Kuhn was the number one seed in the tournament, in the NCAA tournament. He was undefeated up to that point. He had, you know, then he was uh, two and out, basically. He won, maybe won another consolation round, but he did not have a very good tournament as the number one seed. And a lot of it was from this position right here. And he doesn't feel as threatened. One Snyder, point escape for Kuhn. Snyder went to that, that intentional, that the intentional release pretty much. But it's, Kuhn jumped to his feet, got right on the attack. Adam Kuhn's dad wrestled at Alma College, comes from a wrestling family. State champion out of Fowlerville, Kyle Snyder, for went his senior year in high school to work out at the Olympic Training Center, and I would say that has worked out well for him. So the question is, how is he going to go ahead? You see, he's so much Kuhn is so much different than most of the guys that that Snyder wrestles at this weight class. That he moves so well, he understands the attacks We're of Snyder. My fingers, both of you. He just has that size, so the dilemma for Snyder is how do I get underneath this guy but not ruin my chances of, of, uh, of finishing here if I don't get all the way to the corner. And the issue for Kuhn is using his hips if on the attack of Snyder every second because yeah. the way he did it in the dual meet was perfect. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, I think that you're going to get a fresher Kyle Snyder than you did in that dual meet. But, even with that extra conditioning, won't be enough to take down the big guy. Short time in the second period. 1-0 lead for Adam Kuhn. The Wolverine out front. Digging that underhook real hard. There is, is Kuhn and, and Steiner doing a nice job. I'm sure that in that Ohio State wrestling room, Travell Lagnoff, assistant coach for Ohio State, has worked Fingers. a lot on tactics and strategy. Basically staying out of that Easy. underhook. All right, we go to the third period. The last period of regulation of the last match in the finals of the Big Ten Championships. And Adam Kuhn starts on top. He's ahead, 1-0. This is one of the areas of quick escape there by Snyder. That's really key for him to get out. Two quick escapes for each wrestler. It's one to one. You don't want to carry as much of that 285 pounds, as little as that 285 pounds as for as short a period of time as possible. A couple second escape. Helps out a lot. So look for Snyder. What's he gonna do as far as which leg which which side is he gonna attack? Talking about two and Incredibly powerful right here. Right here. wrestlers right here. So going at it, 1-1 one, to one, minute 20, a little bit of blood. There's Tavel Delagnev, two-time Olympic team member for the USA. Look, look at Tavel, how calm he is right now. I love that shot right there. He just, as matter of fact, and his, you know, when you, you go to the corner as an athlete, you want to walk into a corner that, that, that hey, it's calm, collected. This is what you have to do, very tactical. Make it about the wrestling. Give him a little territory right there. Snyder, he circles back in. And Kuhn being pretty disciplined and not bringing that lead leg, or that, that back leg up to, to where he can go ahead and take that shot. So, inside, less than a minute. Inside tie. So if we don't settle it here, we'll go to sudden victory. 40 seconds left in regulation. One to one. Two that could very possibly be teammates on future Olympic and world teams. At heavyweight and but Snyder wrestles at about 213. That's 211, it's a weight class there. So again, Kuhn, very disciplined. There's a low shot there. First decent shot of the match. 
got to the leg, but you see how athletic he was and just brought him back up. And where it looks like we are headed to sudden victory. Ohio State, Michigan. What Snyder wrestle at right here, do you think? Around 220? Uh, 225, I would guess. 225. Yep, there's the high crotch shot. And there's the good hips. Yep. Good work there by Snyder. He's probing. Getting back to his feet. Pretty critical against Kuhn. But again, Kuhn has some offense of his own. If he can stuff the head a little bit, get a slight angle. I think what Snyder is doing a great job right now is not getting in the over and under ties. Now you can tell he's definitely, his vision is definitely looking for the shot. Right there, low angle, low angle shot. And on the shot. But there's the athletic ability of Kuhn. Of both of them. Wow. Yeah, wow. You know, two years ago in the national semifinals, I saw Mike McMullen and Kuhn go at it. Got in on a low shot. Kuhn was just as explosive in that match in overtime as he was right there. Snyder was in on that shot, a little more angle, a little better than it was in the dual meet, and still, Kuhn did a great job with his hips. Yeah. And wait at the right time. In Every and, second counts. In and out, all right, to Snyder. He's gonna come in, out, and then maybe hope to get that back leg to step up, but this may be decided on the map. I don't know how, because both guys got quick escapes, but. Green's down. Get on your feet, wrestle the whole 30 Maybe seconds. Maybe Snyder Set tries bottom. to drop in on the leg for a while. Well, sometimes you gain a little confidence. It's about riding time here if it does go down to the well, extra periods, but Kuhn up and out. Five seconds riding time could come into play. Right there, shot met with the chest. Great job of Snyder getting out of that underhook. Yeah, so five seconds of riding time in favor of uh, Snyder. Same thing, gentlemen. You get to your feet. Stay wrestling. Set red. Green. There's a lot of weight top. on top. Yeah, going to stay with him a little bit. Now we're moving in favor of, of Kuhn on the riding time. And the weight. That yep. is one point. Yes. yes. Woo. Wow, I felt that one, Jim. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> made that big turn right there. Oh. Kuhn had one foot still on bounds when Snyder made the turn, but got seven seconds of riding time in favor of Kuhn, so could be a factor. There's no takedown. When we talk about every second count, and it is coming down to this, because I guarantee you that's who's going to win. No. Laps, right no downtime. Here's where I look for Kuhn to maybe dig on that right underhook. Oh, nice shot there. Arm drag, switching to the uh, shot below the knee. He's able to switch it up. Good job by Kuhn. Now he locks in the crotch a little bit. He's looking for his offense. He's able to go ahead and get it up. He kicks out. He's able to collect the Got two. The two. Wow. That was just a beautiful finish. Beautiful. They got to the outer third of the mat. Kuhn started moving towards the edge. Of course, there's going to be a challenge on this. Kuhn took the strategy of kicking out, but Snyder wouldn't let it go. Hopefully, we can go all the way back to the start of the move here. The arm drag, and then, yep, take a look at their, on their feet. Now we're on the finish. All right, comes back to the finish right here. If you take a look what they're looking at, he kicks out, comes to the outer third, and by the time the knees hit the mat, he's still in bounds. Yes, that's two. That's two, wow. great call. It's gonna be upheld. Wow. Right here, look at the drag right now. Watch him come to the drag, and then come back to the misdirection on the low. So went left here with the drag, and then shot the low shot, comes out the back door. Does a great job of keeping that knee. At this point in time, he thought that Kuhn was going to be able to go ahead and tie him up. Keeps working. Snyder Look kept how coming tight up. he is. Elbow deep right there. Runs him off. Kuhn's moving that direction. Big step. And then kicks his legs back. All right. Oh, you know what? Uh, it, it, I think he, they're in. 
two. Yep. yep. Okay. He yep. gave the two. Yeah. This is pretty clear. His left heel was still in, and his right foot was still in. But great awareness by the champion. Tremendous champions. Tremendous performance by both wrestlers and your world and Olympic champion. Yeah. He knows he's always in the battle there. Boy. Is the Big Ten champion at 285, and they'll meet again. They'll meet again. And so it's one to one this year. And Kent, Kyle Snyder is your heavyweight Big Ten champion, and he's with Shane right now. All right, Kyle, that one never disappointed. Adjustments, the most critical adjustments from that first match with Kuhn. Uh, just a couple things in the hand fighting. And then uh, when I'm getting to a leg really finishing, he's done a good job working on his leg defense from the last time that I wrestled him. So that was the biggest deal. Describe your mindset, your thoughts as you navigate that match. Well, he's really big. And uh, okay. I just knew I had to be smart. When I wrestled him a couple weeks ago, he got to his leg and he's able to put me back down to the mat. So I want to make sure I was taking good shots and then getting underneath of him and finishing. You've done so many great things put into words how you desire deeply a challenge. Yeah, man, it's the thing that I enjoy the most, figuring things out. Uh, Kuhn's a really different challenge than I'm normally uh, competing against. So, but same deal, next, next time I get home, I'll work with the coaches and figure out how to do it even better. Always so fun to watch it, great match. Thanks, Thanks. Kyle. Thanks. Your Big Ten champion, Kyle Snyder, and the takedown of the meet is presented by Resolite. The best takedowns take place on a Resolite. The misdirection of going to the drag. He drug uh, the right arm of Kuhn, then it comes back on the left leg here, and then it was all guts right here at this point. Adam Kuhn really putting a lot of weight. You see the strain coming up, keeping that leg. I mean, that's just like holding on. That leg was just like holding on to his an alligator in the water right there and following up and keeping, have the presence of mind to keeping his feet on the mat, collects the two points.